Hello everyone, uh, my name is John Hart and I'm the director of the Low Income Taxpayer Clinic at Maryland Volunteer Lawyer Service. Uh, so today I've been asked to just talk to people about some filing tips now that the season is, uh, you know, the season is upon us. So these are just tips that I'm going to give out about a number of different topics um, that I think everybody should know about. Uh, so let's get started. So first I want to talk a little bit about filing statuses. Uh, this is something that, you know, isn't always intuitive to people. Um, so there are four common filing statuses. The first is single. That one's pretty simple. Um, it's for taxpayers who are not married and they don't financially support a household. Well, they can't have some dependents. Um, if you're not married but you do support a household, uh, which means you know you pay for the upkeep of the lodging of multiple people, essentially, uh, you can uh, claim the head of household filing status. Uh, that is for people who financially support a household, as, as I said, and they also have at least one qualifying dependent. And of course, uh, for head of household, people may not know this, you, you actually do have to be unmarried. If you're married, you can't claim head of household. Although you can claim married filing jointly, which is the next one we're going to talk about. So married filing jointly is when a married taxpayer and their spouse file one tax return for both of their taxes. Uh, their incomes are combined, they report on one return, which means um, if you claim dependence on that one return, you're essentially, the, both the people are claiming dependence, which is good for their taxes. Um, there are also uh, benefits when it comes to tax credits and your standard, de standard deduction for married filing jointly, which is why it's very common that you see married couples uh, filing together for the tax benefits. Um, the one downside that may come into play is that once you file a joint tax return, um, both taxpayers are responsible for paying the taxes. They're considered, if you file a joint return, essentially your spouse's taxes are your taxes as well. Uh, if you don't want to do that, uh, but you're married, you could also uh, file married filing separately. So that is for married taxpayers uh, and their spouses to file one tax return themselves, one for each of them. Uh, and that only covers their own individual taxes. Their incomes are counted separately. They're not responsible for paying the other spouse's taxes. The downside is often that um, that can lead you to paying more taxes because the tax credit benefits and the standard deduction aren't quite as generous. So speaking of tax credits, there are two I want to talk about. The first is the earned income tax credit. That is a really big tax credit. As many as one out of five people who are eligible for the credit don't claim it, they miss it. And it can be a pretty large credit, uh, upwards of $1,000. Uh, if the amount that you qualify for the EITC is greater than what you owed, it's also refundable, which means you get money back from the IRS in your refund. So eligibility for that credit is based on you um, working uh, with low to moderate income, less than, say, $59,000. You do have to have a valid social security number for you and your spouse uh, if, you're if you're claiming it together. Uh, you can't have any foreign income. Uh, you can't have, well, you, um, in order to get the full amount, you will need a number of qualifying children with social security numbers. Uh, and then finally, sometimes the, the IRS can be uh, more likely to audit uh, households who claim the EITC. And it, that can delay your refund, but remember, an audit um, just means that the IRS is examining your return. It doesn't mean that you've done anything wrong or you're going to get fined. So, um, and usually, the amount of money that you get from the EITC is worth the delay. Another common tax credit that you might want to think about is the child tax credit. So that is uh, sort of an additional tax credit for your dependents. Uh, just know that, you know, just because you can claim somebody as a dependent on your return, doesn't necessarily mean you can also claim them for the child tax credit. The test for the CTC, the child tax credit, is a little bit narrower than the test for claiming somebody as a dependent. Uh, if you want to know more about how specifically to claim that, the IRS website has a number of really great pages on all of these tax credits explaining exa exactly how they work. So moving on to uh, filing methods, there are two free filing methods that I really want to highlight for people. The first, if you think you know your taxes are pretty straightforward, you don't have a lot of different income sources, you maybe only have one or two dependents, um, the IRS online free file system, which has opened now for the current year filing season, is available on the IRS website at www.irs.gov. 
this is a tax preparation partnership program, I guess you could say, uh, for people who make $70,000 or, or less a year between the IRS and a number of different organizations like Free Tax USA. Um, TurboTax used to be a part of the program, for example. Uh, it's one of those commercial tax preparation software programs, but you can use it for free as part of this program uh, if you have low income and a number, meet a number of other requirements. This is also a method that might let you file your state taxes too, uh, depending on what partner organization or company you choose to use. The other method I want to talk about before I close this video out are, are uh, VITA sites. So VITA, Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Sites. If you made less than $60,000 uh, last year, you may be eligible for free tax preparation services at these sites where you can actually have someone essentially ask, acting as a professional tax preparer for you that can answer all of your tax questions um, and file your return for you. So um, these sites are appointment only. You need to uh, book an appointment in advance and bring all of the necessary tax materials with you to the appointment. Uh, one organization that we refer people to a lot in the Baltimore area is the Maryland Cash Campaign. And you can learn all about them, their sites, and their procedures at www.cashmd.org. CashMD um, is all one word, all lowercase, no spaces. All right, so I think I've talked a lot for a video in this format, so uh, I will sign off now. Just know that if you, um, if you run into trouble filing this tax season, um, and say you maybe get in trouble with the IRS. After all this filing, you know, you can come see us at MVLS at www.mvlslaw.org. Again, all lowercase, one word, no spaces. Thank you very much.